the topic I'm being given is menopause. M as in Mary, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, O as in Orange, P as in Peter, A as in Apple, U as in Umbrella, S as in Sam, and E as in Edward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What is menopause? What is, can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. What is menopause? Menopause occurs naturally in most women between ages 45 and 42 and 52. When I was doing my research, it's been told that in the US, averagely at the age of 51, majority of women will enter or encounter what we call menopause. And uh, from my research, I discovered that approximately 1.2 billion women worldwide will be menopausal by the year 2030. And that out of this, 85% of these women will experience problematic symptoms. That is, their symptoms might be very tormenting and unbearable. That will not be your portion. That will not be my portion in Jesus' name. But we know that it's good to prepare by having knowledge of what is coming. Praise God. And some of those problematic symptoms include hot flashes, night sweat, sleep disturbances, sexual dysfunction, mood disorders, weight gain, and many other things. You know, at times, I don't know whether you witnessed it, you just feel hot. Within the little second, you feel cold again. Oh, Danny put off the fan. Oh, Danny hung it again. And the man goes, uh-uh. Why, well, you not the one that said I should just put it off? Yes, I'm just feeling, just, I just want to be seeing the fan rotating. That is, that could be part of the symptoms. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because there have been so many things that have been said regarding menopause, there are a lot of myths. That is, there's some statement that looks like facts, that looks like truth, but actually they are not. So having known what is menopause, I want us to first deal with those myths. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when people believe, oh, you're going to enter into menopause when you start menstru um, menstrual period early, there are many. But out of them, I just picked a little that you and I could discuss. So when they are saying it outside, we will know that, no, this is a myth. This is not the truth. Praise the Lord. The number one myth I want to discuss is that people say when menopause starts, the symptoms start. It is not so. It is not for everybody. Most of the time, the symptoms of menopause will be occurring earlier than you get to the menopause. There's what we call perimenopausal period. That is the period before the menopause. You know, when some of us start, in those days when you start your menses, your mother will kill a chicken. Do you remember those times? <laughs> and when you start forcing the, uh, the, uh, the, the menstrual period, it, is no, it was not regular. So the same thing happens to when it's about to come to an end. And um, before I go on, if you have the Good News translation, the Bible says something there in that Good News translation of... Um, I think it's Genesis 18:12 in Good News Translation. Toyin, do we have that slide on? Oh, thank you. Abraham and Sarah were very old, and Sarah had stopped having her monthly periods. That goes to tell us that there's even a account about menopause in our Bible. Praise the Lord. So it is not something that the enemy has caused. It is not from the devil. Praise the Lord. It just shows that you and I are passing through one of the seasons in a woman's life. Praise God. So the first myth is, oh, immediately you enter into menopause, it, we, the, the symptoms will start like that. For most people, for some people it might be like that. People that enter into early menopause, but for the majority of people, it starts gradually. Praise the Lord. For some people, you discover that in their perimenopausal stage, because all these things are controlled by some chemicals in the body that we call hormones. 
and as we grow old in as we grow older in age the levels of these hormones these chemicals that God has placed in our system some goes some go up some go low so the imbalance in the hormonal level of us lead to what we call menopause praise the lord the second myth i want to go to is period automatically ceases it's just like the first myth it is not for everybody that period automatically will cease like that. And you know, this are, even if your period stops, it is, don't just assume that you've entered into menopause. There may be some other inherent um, challenges who will not have problems in Jesus' name that has come. So at that time, you need to visit your physician. Everything we're going to say today is not that, oh, they told me this in church and that is it. We, will still, we are still backing it up with the fact that even though you are going through any season in life, menopause or anything, please and please go see the doctor. We know we have the, the doctor of doctors. Let's hear what they say. Let's bring it to the doctor of doctors and we'll summon the mountains in Jesus' name. The third myth is hot flashes are the only symptoms. No. You may enter into menopause with another symptoms. So because you don't have hot flashes does not mean that you and I have not entered into menopause. At times, I don't know what happens, you just ask yourself, where am I going? What do I want to do? I think I forget. You'll be looking for the khaki and it's with you. It's, you, you discover that you, you start losing concentration. I won't, say it, I won't say memory. You start forgetting things. That may be your own menopausal symptoms. So just to debunk that myth, that the only symptom of menopause is hot flashing. That is incorrect. Praise the Lord. Amen. Another myth is that, oh, once you enter into menopause, there will be decreased sexual drive or decreased libido. It, doesn't, it is not everybody that go through um, decreased libido or reduce in sexual, in sexual drive. It's not everybody. Though some women report a decrease in sexual desire and changes in arousal uh, during menopause. Research has shown that healthy non-smoking menopausal women with partners have experienced no change in sexual satisfaction. Does that give us a liberty to go smoke? No. Praise the Lord. And some people also say that their, their satisfaction sexually decreases for some people. But as I've said, as I've said, it's not for everybody. Praise the Lord. Personal, personality, personal, uh, pa, Mr. Miss A might go through sexual reduction in sexual drive. Miss B might not go through it. Because there may be other reasons why you are having decreased sexual drive. You know, praise the Lord. Uh, in the science world, they used to make fun of African men that they, can I be open? Okay. They used to make fun of African men that they are crude in sexual life. They just, once they want it, they just go for it because there is no preparation. They don't allow the woman to get aroused. So at times, that may be the reason why that, that woman is having low sexual drive. It may not, that may not even be your own menopausal symptom. I, am I making a statement? So just to let us know that because Sister B is having her own menopausal symptoms as reduced libido doesn't mean that I also, it will be part of my own symptoms. Praise the Lord. Another myth is that it must be treated. You must go and get yourself treated. Actually, in this, from my research, I discovered that they don't, they don't even see menopause as a sickness unless you have problematic symptoms that needs to be treated because they know it's part of the season of life in the life of a woman. Praise the Lord. Menopause is a completely normal process. Let's say that menopause is a completely normal process. It is not a disease that you should look on that woman and see if it's an income. She's no more, oh, she's now a male. No, that doesn't mean you've turned to a male. No. 
It is just a complete normal process in the life of we women. It's not a disease that needs to be treated. Treatment focuses actually on relieving the problematic symptoms. Praise God. And, and as we used to be told, even if you drink more water, there are side effects. Praise God. Some women don't need any treatment at all when they are in this phase of life. You, all you just need is, we'll talk about it later. It, it might be even rest. Praise God. Myth number six, you can't get pregnant during menopause. That's a big lie. That is a big, big lie. So don't say, oh, because I'm in menopause, that's enough of a contraceptive for me. You're going to have the baby. You're going to have the baby. Yes, you can get pregnant in the process of menopause or during perimenopause when your circle may become irregular, often with no set pattern between periods. I, there was a particular research paper I read that said, what actually most medical... Um, I'm a pharmacist by profession in Nigeria, but here I'm a nurse. So I'm not a medical doctor. I may not be giving the whole. But what I've discovered is that they said they don't actually label loss to have entered into menopause until you have had no symptoms for a year. Or maybe they've performed all the tests. Praise the Lord. So you can get pregnant during menopause. After one full year without a period, then you are considered, you are going through, to be going through menopause. But remember, you could still be at risk of sexually transmitted diseases, such as gonorrhea, chlamydia, and even AIDS. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. The myth number seven is risk of taking hormones outweighs the benefits. Risk of taking hormones outweighs the benefit. As I've said, hormones are chemical bodies that runs in our systems to, for the breasts, for the pubic hair, for the air in the armpit, for the, for the shape that comes out. But most medications that are being used to treat the symptoms that are problematic or challenging to the women that are going through it are also hormones. And these hormones have their side effects. And they could be very terrible. Maybe you've had a lot, oh, cancer, oh, high blood pressure. It is true. And that is why most people try to say, oh, you better don't get it treated because it's this, because it is true. Uh, we thank God for the country where we find ourselves. When they give hormone to people to use, don't discourage yourself. Don't use it all. You know what? The reason is that the amount they use because of the risk is very minimal. So if I'm discouraging Sister B from using what the provider has recommended for her, I may not be doing a good job. You can pray for me for the symptoms to not to be too challenging and problematic, but for me to discourage a sister that has been prescribed an hormone not to use it, you might not be helping that sister. Because of the myth that the risk-benefit ratio of taking hormones to treat challenging menopausal system is high, so don't use it. That might be an incorrect statement. Because when they prescribe it, they've, they've, um, it has gone through a series of tests to know the amount that will be safe for you. And you will not be the example that will have that reaction in Jesus' name. And even they, when they're prescribing it for you, they don't allow you to use it for a long period. They use it in small doses for a controlled, monitored period, and when they're going to tell you to stop, they tape you off it gradually. Praise the Lord. So even if you want to be stubborn against your provider and you cut it off suddenly, it might have another negative effect. Praise God. Myth number seven. The risk number eight. You must suffer through the symptoms. We will not suffer in Jesus' name. God that has made us women, we are his babies, we are his last born. He has not created us to have those hormones to come and suffer. Praise the Lord. So it is, this is one of the myths that, oh, hmm, once we enter 51 like this, welcome to the world of suffering. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. What is the truth about this? The truth is there are many avenues to reducing the symptoms and feeling better. 
during menopause. And there are very many, they are individualistic and there are various types, from dietary changes to some herbal supplements to some practice like practice of yoga and medication to hormone replacement therapy you can get back to feeling like yourself again. Because that is the burden of most people, that I don't feel like a woman any longer. I don't feel myself again. In fact, it made like clock 48, I lost it. I'm no more myself. And it gives some women mental torture, that some even commit suicide. They say they don't feel that they're women any longer. But this is a myth. Don't accept, enter menopause, you are suffer. Suffering is not ours in the name of Jesus. What is the trick? What is the way out? The way out is find out what works for you. Some people, we, as we are Christians, they pray about it. Let me not jump the gun. Talk to your doctor about your options and don't give up. Myth number nine. Every menopausal woman has hot flashes. It is not every menopausal woman that has hot flashes. It is not every menopausal. Some people, they have vaginal dryness. That during the, the act, some people even bleed because that area is so dry. Those may be the symptoms for other people. Some people, they are so irrational, they are so... In fact, some people label themselves to be bipolar during that time because they, they are, their emotion is roller coasting. They, are, they could be happy now, they could be sad the next moment. You see them at work very touchy. The next moment they are very happy. They could be going through menopausal symptoms. They should just go check themselves out what is going on. So it is not every woman that has odd flashes as a symptom. Thank you for the diagram of that female. If this diagram is gonna be a bit bigger, I would have loved it, but it just tells us that women are wonderfully created. Those hormones, as they are getting low and some are getting high, believe you me, it affects every system. And that is why when I was reading at home, I was I said, this is the reason why you should not be just hit hit a woman anyhow, because you don't know, maybe you hit on the head, and the symptoms in the and the woman just collapsed, and you now say, oh, it was my anger issue, and the woman is laying flat on the floor. That would not be our portion. Menopause, men, menopause could affect every system in the body. Let me start from the brain. One of the, some of the symptoms that we see that menopause can result into, as early as two years, before the final menstrual period, which they normally call FMP, they will ask you, when, is your, when was your FMP? It's, no, it's not a big word, it's just final menstrual period. The last time, the last month you saw your menses. As early as two years before your final menstrual period, these symptoms might be occurring in a woman. And then it could get to the maximum level that the person might be so irrational that they, people might not know that it is a challenging symptoms of, symptom of menopause that she's going through. Some, they might max in their symptoms maybe after four years. And uh, some of this, this, we call it the central nervous systems, the central nervous systems related symptoms of menopause could be hot flashes, sweating, you see them just sweating like feeling cold, trembling, sleep disruption. Oh, I don't, I don't sleep well. I only sleep maybe as from one to three, I'm up. It could be as a result of menopause. Depression, anxiety, mood changes, decline in memory, forgetfulness, and some do have terrible migraine headaches. Terrible, as if they are banging something on their head. These are central nervous system related symptoms showing menopause. And you discover that for some women, they, they have trunk obesity. Trunk obesity, you discover that they increase in weight. And as, and as they increase in weight, their visceral organs, like their kidney, you know, we have the kidneys, two kidneys at our back. Their visceral organs also increase in size. 
And when all these organs are increasing in size, we're giving too much work for the heart to do. Because if the size is small, the heart will get less work to do. But as we are just eating anyhow, and we're saying we're feeling robust, the liver is getting big, the pancreas is getting big, our, our boobs are get, is getting bigger, the stomach is getting bigger, we're getting sicker. Because now the heart that's supposed to pump like this, lop, dop, lop, dop, lop, dop, lop, dop. It's not going lop, dop, 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 lop. You know, it will soon pack up because we're giving too much work for the heart to do. So when we have increased weight due to menopause, we need to check it. You need to check it. There's increased weight circumference. Out of ignorance, I used to tell my husband when I was very slim, ah, I want to be fat. So when I tie rapper, the rapper will, will stand very well. I never knew I was calling for problems. Ignorance. Praise the Lord. Another symptom that we see is cardiovascular changes, that is hearts. Cardiovascular changes. There is increase in what we call the level of fat, which I can call cholesterol. When the level of heart fat cholesterol is high, the pipe that carries the blood in the system, let me use this tiny rope. This tiny rope. When the, the, this is the normal size. But as we get to menopause, some of us, the pipe be, become, maybe, I don't want to touch this so that the decorating people will not be mad at me. It might double because the tube also has fat in between. And because there is fat in between the, the rope of the tube now, the blood passing through the tube now passes forcefully. So when we eat all those things and there are deposits of fat, you know, like a pipe, the, the blood vessel is like a pipe, with deposits of fat at the side of the pipe now, the blood will not be able to go easily. You know when we are flushing our pipe, the plumping work, we call it when you, I don't know whether your sink has blood before, and then you call the plumber, they remove the under something, they wash it. When they show you the, the, that C-shaped pipe, you see a lot of dregs inside the pipe. That's what the fat does. And because the fat deposits are there, when they check the blood, they say, oh, our cholesterol level is too high. All this cholesterol level being too high pushes up our blood pressure. So it goes back again to lop, dop, lop, dop, lop, dop, and then the heart pops up quickly. So these are cardiovascular changes that happen as a result. So you discover that menopause pushes us to be at risk of cardiac problems. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Apart from that, let's go down to our bladder area, our bladder, our kidney area. How does menopause affect that area? We've talked about vagina dryness. That place is supposed to be lubricated. How many people wash their nose? You, you, you wake up in the morning and you wash your nose. You've been washing your nose every day. Uh -huh. So that area, the nose and that area, there's a level of, a, we call it microbial flora, a natural level of microbial flora that God has created. We call it pH. Chemistry people, are you here? <laughs> but, but, but when menopause sets in, that place is not lubricated any longer. It becomes harsh. It becomes dry. Because the, P, the acidity of that area has been reduced. Has been, yes. And so it's, it's so hard. So you discover that even penetration during sexual act becomes so painful. It's because of menopause. Vagina dryness. It could be very serious for some people. They bleed. Praise the Lord. And there is vulva itching. I hope I'm not speaking too much negative words. Okay. There's vulva itching. There's burning for some people as a result of menopause. Some, there is what we call dysuria, difficult in urinating. It is so spicy that they, have, they, 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 they dread going to the restroom. Because they find it. So when you see some people saying, oh, I have problems. It's not that the person has performed so, some se um, indecent sexual act. It might be due to menopause. Praise the Lord. Another one is urgency. You just feel like, like going to the rest. I want to do it now. I want to do it now. It might be for you a symptom of 
menopause. And some people, they find it easy. You discover when, when, when you have UTI again, UTI is urinary tract infection. It's not because that person is um, sexually debased. It might be due to menopause that pushes such individual to be at a higher risk for urinary tract infection. I've talked about sexual dysfunctioning. The sexual desire goes low. So if, if our, I, and I believe our husband need to be told this mommy so that when the women are sort of, they don't pray that night comes, it's because of that. Because there is no uh, joy in it. It's painful. Praise the Lord. So there's painful sexual intercourse. Then you discover that you have joint pains. The musculoskeletal problem starts setting because you discover they start telling you that oh, take more calcium, take more calcium. And that's why any food you know now, you take it in moderate quantities so that you at least you have all those um, elements, all those things that you need for your bone. Praise the Lord. It is true, you stand too much at work. So when you get to the kitchen, go and buy a stool and sit down. Go and buy a stool and sit down. My husband used to sit down. We are not used to sitting down in the kitchen here any longer. But forgetting that your bones are getting old. That's where we need to come for Holy Communion. So that as you drink the blood of Jesus, your bones get stronger. Yes. Praise the Lord. And then you discover that at times, I don't know whether it happens, you, you miss your steps most times. Ah, I don't miss, what's wrong with this that I just miss my, it's because the, the bones are getting weaker. The bones are getting weaker. The Lord helps us in Jesus' name. Skin and ear changes. So it, this menopause is affecting almost every part of the system. You discover that, you discover that before you got, one of the things my husband said he saw was my long hair. But now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we say it by joke. Ah, it was when I, when I started having children, the children took my hair. They didn't take your hair off. It's your hair. <laughs> Praise God. There's hair changes. They become very fragile. The skin become very, 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 they, 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 there's, it, you discover that your skin tonicity is not as good as it was when you were younger. Is menopause that is setting in. Praise. There's air loss. And then you, you discover that I, I don't used to have dry skin before. I don't know what happened. Your skin start getting dry. You start now looking for lotions. And I lotion my body, but now I when I apply the same lotion, my skin gets dry easily. It is menopause. It might be menopause that is setting in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Most of the time we hear of an omen that they call FSH, FSH. There are many, but the most popular ones that we are told we, uh, is common. I don't, want to, I don't want to take us through the chemistry of telling you different hormones. But just know that there is one that they normally see that the level is FSH. That FSH, what it means is follicle-stimulating hormone. It is one that tells the ovary to do this, to do that. God put it there for us. But as we enter into menopause, the level of this FSH in us starts getting higher, start rising up. So when I did the research, I discovered that that's one of the things they look at. When they said, let's do the blood test, they discovered that the FSH in us, as we enter into menopause, get higher. But the blood of Jesus is able. Praise yeah. God. Management of menopause. I will just say some normal management that when they will go to scriptural handling of menopause. Menopause, because it's not a disease, but the problematic or, to, or the tormenting or the challenging symptoms have been handled medically. The people that bleed, there are those ones, I pity them, the ones that bleed, please and please and please and please, when you discover that you are bleeding more than normal or you discover that your menses are becoming irregular, please don't keep quiet. Pray and seek medical attention before it is too late. There was a woman that kept quiet like that. The PCD was getting low, 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 low. She thought maybe it's the work of the devil until she fell. Please, once you know that the, you are noticing irregular menses or is coming 
more than before or is coming but is getting clotty. It's coming in lumps. Please, let's seek for medical advice. Praise the Lord. If the abnormal bleeding is due to hormonal changes, the doctor will tell us. And if it is due to hormonal, if it is not due to hormonal changes, further tests will be performed. I remember when we were in Nigeria and um, my husband used to have a practicing um, outfit. The woman has been bleeding for long. And she said she thought it was the enemy. She said she thought it was the enemy. She neither, tell, she neither t uh, told the husband or anybody in the house until one day, you know, we normally have a stool in the kitchen in Africa, until she slumped on that stool and then come and see blood coming out. Apparently, she had been having it, but she didn't tell anybody to ask, this is going on, what should I do? Please, if you note, whether it is irregular in coming or it is irregular in flowing, either it's flowing in, 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 in a clot, Please pick up. Please pick up. And that woman was, was watching telly, was watching the TV and just stood like this in front of the TV and come and see just water flowing because she has kept quiet. And she, it was as they opened the tap. Thank God for Jesus and thank God for the medical attention. We shouldn't wait till we get to that stage. Let's pick up, please. The hot flashes. What I normally ad advise people because is that number one, tell your doctor, and number two, if you know that you could, um, when you are feeling cold, close the window, wear layered clothing. And if you discover that it's getting too much, instead of you now to go and collapse in the store, please seek medical attention. Praise the Lord. And uh, it is not all about medications that fit all body systems. Because this use herbal supplement to treat our own menopause doesn't mean that the same herbal supplement will work with you. Because each of us have different body systems. And each of us have different comorbidities. Comorbidities are, that is, you have other challenges. Let me say, for example, person A is asthmatic. Person A has a um, has, um, high potassium level. Person A, that's number two. Person A also has high sugar. And person B does not have all those three morbidities. And then you are taking the ABBA supplement that person B is taking. Is that foolishness of wisdom or wisdom? Because if you go take those ABBA supplements and it doesn't go well with your sugar system, what happens? Or it forces your sugar it, it forces your sugar level boom, and you know it is more risky for sugar level to go down to find that to go high, and then you collapse. What happens? So because they say, my sister, this is what we are using now for men, and you say, let me try it. It might not be wisdom. Praise the Lord, because I know the Chinese people they have a lot that they are using as supplement for menopause. Before you try, please seek at medical attention. Also, some people use acupuncture, the ones that use pins. Those are other ways that, but I'm not, I'm just, I just want us to have the idea. So when we go out, this managerial system, this managerial tips of um, menopause will not just be a bait that will just, oh, let me try it. Some people, it is true, they use acupuncture, they use a uh, herbal supplement, but pre before you join them to pick whatever you want to pick, let your doctor advise because he, he, your doctor has your medical chart. He knows your history. That friend that's using acupuncture, that's using abasol, never had a, a, a glimpse of your medical chart. Praise the Lord. Also, there's lifestyle changes such as avoiding caffeine, avoiding alcohol, keeping your environment cool, wearing light, lighter clothing may, may reduce symptoms, but be sure to talk to your doctor about whether hormonal therapy is the right choice for you. Regarding vaginal symptoms, that, that is vaginal dryness or discomfort, some, med, some physicians prescribe hormones. If your physician feels hormones will be good for you, just tell them your fears. Oh doctor, I've heard that this thing is cancerous, this thing could lead to other things, do you think it's good for me? He's going to give you a dose that will be monitored for some time. That is, if he feels that is the last choice for you. And he could give you that so many creams, so many vaginal moisturizer that they give. 
but please let your doctor know about it. Now, scriptural handling of menopause. Scriptural handling of menopause. The best way to handle menopause is what we are doing today, being knowledgeable, so that we prepare for it before it comes. Like we tell our children to start praying for their college roommate before they even get to college. So even before you enter into that, maybe you are, oh, 51 is still too far. Believe you me, it will come very soon. It's not far at all. Before you get there, start preparing for it. Oh, they told us in church that menopause will come. Lord, when my, when my menopausal season comes, let it not be problematic for me. Praise the Lord. So prepare for it. Don't live in fear. Don't live in denial that it doesn't occur. And pray before you reach that stage. While you are in that stage now, if you are in that stage, or if you soon reach that stage, number one management, please seek the right medical attention. Pray about it, stay informed, and have healthy lifestyle choices. Let's reduce the size of our plates. Let's increase, you know that round plate? If our plate is round, we divide it into four, Half will be what? Vegetables. The other half will be divided into two. One quarter will be what? Protein. The last quarter will be what? Oh, wow. Koga is healthy. Koga is healthy. Praise the Lord. Because we need a healthy body to serve God. We need a healthy body to serve God. Once your BMI, your body max index, is getting above 25, ah, getting above 30, obesity is knocking. The Lord will bless us and give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Keep our mind and exercise regularly. Very, very important. Please, very, very important. Most doctors believe that Nigerians, we don't exercise. Africans that we don't exercise. Let it be part of our of our daily duty, just as we do morning devotion. Even if it is just 20 minutes. Even if I do it, at times I do it, at times I'm not, me that I'm saying it, I'm not a good whatever of it, but I, I discover that when I put it in the kitchen, I do it more. But when I say I'm going to do it, most of the time I don't. So I put this something in the kitchen and I'll start doing it. So that at least when I'm talking, Holy Spirit will say you are, not, you are, you are obedient. Let's exercise. Let's exercise. It's very, very important. Let's exercise, exercise, exercise. It's very, very good. Instead of taking elevator, take stairs. Some people are laughing. You know, we drive most of, most of the time. We are seated. We don't move about. And when we don't move about, you discover the calcium in the, in the bone just tastes like that. And then it start, our bones start getting weak and fragile. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep your mind engaged also. Let's keep our mind, let us, let's know how to tune, to tune to the faith channel because my friend is going through tormenting uh, menstrual symptoms. doesn't mean that it's going to happen to you. Engage your mind. Read. Read. Study. Spend time with God in Bible study. Pray. Me do meditation. Reach out to others to occupy yourself. It helps a lot. Take your vitamins and minerals that you need. And if it is getting tormenting, please consider hormonal therapy. You will not be the candidate that the hormone will react to in the name of Jesus. Then declare your, the God, God's word over your body. Declare God's word over your body. Uh, whenever we come for um, Holy Communion, because I used to say, God, I've come for another immunization today, this month. There have been series of, um, of miracles with that Holy Communion that most of us don't consider as important. It is very, very important because the body of Jesus has been cut for us. We will not go through any surgery. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if we, uh, we need to consider it, I know we know about this just to do it. Let's pay attention to our blood pressure. Very important. It's on Amazon, we can buy it, 50, 60, 80 dollars. Early in the morning, just stay by your bed. Just check it. Have a log of it. Just write it. So when you get to the doctor, just present it to them. They will use, that one will help them a lot to see your log in the morning and able to see your log at night at times. Praise the Lord. The log is the record 
that we are keeping of our blood pressure, then even if the doctor now prescribes us with medication, let us be medication compliant. Let us be medication compliant. And there are some tests that it will be good for us to schedule. Scheduling a test doesn't mean that we'll be positive. It's just for us to know what is going on in our system. Because you might have a smiling face, but your body might be crying. You might have a, 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 health, a healthy face, but a, a, a smiling face, but the body might be crying. So then when they are calling you, oh, you are doing for this test, you are, let's go and do the test. When we bring the report, we put it at the altar. The God of all impossibility will change it. Praise the Lord. Maybe they have been calling us for cervical cancer screening. Maybe they have been calling us for the pap test, which is done every three years. Maybe they even call you for mammogram. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go for those tests. They are very important, especially as we start entering into the menopausal stage. Maybe they tell you, you know, you, you do that occult blood that they will tell you to take some sample of your, of your stool and send it to the lab. Let's do all these tests. They can, they can show us any red flag that is going on. Check of your cholesterol level. Please, let's do, go for those tests. There is so much confusion these days about menopause and perimenopause. And the lay literature is saturated with a lot of misinformation. Hormonal therapy is not a one size fits all. Maybe they gave your friend five milligram. That doesn't mean that you too, you should take five milligram. Let your doctor decide if hormonal therapy is good for you, the amount of hormonal medication that you need. In conclusion, menopause is true. Menopause does not happen because that sister is a sinner. Menopause is not a disease, it's a normal biological system, biological process. Menopause can be managed. Menopause can be prepared for. Menopause is not a killer. It is when we mismanage it that it may become troublesome. The Lord will give us wisdom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any question? And if you have people here to help me to... And if you have people also to answer those questions, anyone I can't answer... People can be here to answer for me as well. No question? Oh, wow. Did I do a good job? Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord.